Okay, today we're in the diesel shop here at Tech uh, doing the tire inspection on the 2000 Red Freightliner. Okay, so as far as some of the tools early on, uh, we have a tread depth gauge here that measures the depth of the tread. Remember that it has a 30 seconds of an inch side and a millimeter side. So we use the 30 seconds of an inch because that's our specification. And on any commercial vehicle other than transportation, like a bus or whatnot, uh, if it's a commercial vehicle, then the steer tires, so front tires have to have 430 seconds minimum tread. And the rear or drive or trailer tires have to have 230 seconds. Now that changes if it's a transportation vehicle like a city bus, school bus, or whatnot to 430 seconds all the way around. But if it's not transporting passengers, then that's our specification. Standard tire pressure gauge. Remember when you're checking tire pressure that you should use the OEM specification for the vehicle. So there should be a placard inside the vehicle it's in different places but uh, it will tell you what your PSI should be it is listed on the tire but that's kind of a generic tire manufacturer specification so you're better off referring to the vehicle specification to get your specification for inflation because it'll be different for a single tire versus a dual setup and whatnot so always refer to that now as far as inspecting the tire for wear you might think well if it's got weird wear patterns we're going to replace it so why do i need to look at that and diagnose what's going on the reason for that would be there's probably an issue causing that particular tire wear so we want to be sure we address that issue if not the new tire will just fail in the same manner and shorten the tire life and tires are very expensive so that's our job as a technician to figure out what's going on so it's a little hard to see on video but inspecting this tire it has some uneven kind of wavy wear pattern so low spots and high spots along this outer edge right here not in the middle but it has a little bit over here on the inside tread as well. So that's kind of an odd wear pattern. It's not even universal across the tire. So it's amazing how many different things can happen to cause all these different types of tread patterns wear on tires. So we have to refer to some kind of a service book. So I have this book here put out by TMC. So it tells us that given this wear, and it shows us a picture here of it and helps us identify what it is, and it tells us that is erosion slash river wear. Okay. The reason I have to refer to the causes for this is it tells me what causes that, and more importantly, it tells me that this particular wear pattern on this front tire should not be a concern. It tells me why it wears that way, so there's not a component failure or something causing this. It's kind of a natural occurrence for this particular type of vehicle and application and how it's used, so that would tell me no actions are needed. Now there is a tire on the back we'll get to that has this particular wear pattern. Cupping, scalloping, shoulder wavy wear. It's different than what's on this front one. so. It tells me it could be the shocks, it could be a severe out of balance condition, it could be the rim being damaged, so it gives me a lot of different things, including kingpins that can cause this. Okay. Now when you refer to this, there's steering axle, and then there's a section for drive axles and trailers, so you know it be sure you're in the right section to match the tire that you're diagnosing as far as its location on the vehicle. Okay, and it can tell me what I can do to correct the problem. So anyway, that's why we have to refer to the service manual to be sure we're doing the job right. Moving on to the rear on the driver's side. One thing that's pretty obvious on a visual inspection is we have different tread patterns here. Federal law says we have to have the same tread pattern across an axle so all four of these tires, driver's side and passenger side, have to have the same tread pattern. 
Now it can be different on a different axle, but this axle has to be the same. Different tread patterns can give us a brake imbalance under a panic brake stop. So if somebody stops in front of you, you have to get on the brakes really hard. Could cause an accident, so that's problematic. So that's why they want the tread to be the same on all those. As far as inflation, every tire on this truck is underinflated. They're anywhere from zero, one's completely flat and the bead's broken down on it. And the highest one is about 65 PSI, so they range all in between there. So all of them are low because it should be 115 on the front axle on this truck and 105 on the duals on the back. So all the tires are underinflated. Be sure to refer to that video that I posted on plan book about zipper failures because a underinflated tire is how we can have that zipper failure because it damages a sidewall. So for safety reasons, they don't want you to air up a tire that's more than 20% low on inflation. So you have to do some math there, but if it's more than 20% low, they want you to remove that tire, place it in a cage, and preferably air it up remotely so that you're not squatted down beside the tire if that zipper failure occurs and explodes because it can maim or possibly even kill you. So it's a pretty serious safety issue there, so be sure you refer to those videos and that'll explain all that a lot better. Okay. Another issue would have, would have found on this truck, now it's under some other repairs, so the tires have been removed, but they are mismatched as well two different tread types so that's another thing you would write up as being problematic another issue here that we need to address is this stud has been cut off with a torch before arriving at our shop so somebody let this go breaking the law because all the studs have to be in good shape and all the lug nuts have to be installed and working properly as per federal guidelines Speaking of federal guidelines, you would think I can just replace this stud and be good to go. Federal guidelines say that since this stud was not there doing its job clamping on the wheel, this stud and this stud, so the one to either side of that, could have been overworked or stretched because this guy in the middle was not doing his job. So federal law says I have to replace all three of these studs before I can let this vehicle go out of the shop if I want to be federal compliant. So keep that in mind. All three, the one on either side has to be replaced on that. Okay. So we've talked about tread patterns not being the same. When we get to this side of the truck on the back, we can see that we have a lug type tread here, which is considered a drive axle or a drive tire. So it has lugs on it. This tire is a steer tire. It doesn't have lugs. So this tire should only be on the front axle, possibly a trailer, but generally you'll have the lug type on the trailer as well. This is a steer axle tire. So those two should definitely not be on the same axle and especially not side by side on the same dual. Now your task sheet is going to refer to are the tires properly mated. Now a properly mated set of tires means duals that are the same exact size, tread pattern and all that. So one way to make sure we have a proper mating of tires is by using a tire square. A tire square just has a 90 degree angle here and it looks like a majorly overgrown framing square that a carpenter would use maybe building a house or whatnot. So the way we use that is we're going to place the long edge of that where it's touching the sidewall evenly front and back, holding it level, pull it down against the tread out here until it stops. So it's a little hard to see on this video, but we're touching this tire. When we get to this inside tire, there's over an inch space between the mating square and the tire. So what that's telling us is this outside tire on this dual setup is a lot taller than the inside one, so it's gonna have a different rolling circumference. 
it's going to cover more ground in one revolution. So the inside tire is going to get wore out really quick because it's trying to cover a shorter distance in one revolution than this outside one. The other major problem is now this outside tire is carrying more of the load, so it's going to be overloaded because it can't evenly distribute between these two tires. That's very problematic, so that's what we're doing with the tire square to see if they're mated. Okay. The front drive axle on the passenger side, once again, we have a steer tire that's wore completely out on the inside and outside shoulders here. And then we have a recapped lug type tire here. So once again, we're mismatched on our tread types. I'm gonna have to put the tire square on this because it is way different in height. This tire is actually flat. That contributes to it being different heights because they have to inflate it to the same PSI to attempt to even be the same height. So here we have that type of wear I showed you in the little service guide there where it's humped and wore out here. This is that balance problem. It could be shocks, it could be the tire's not balanced, it could be a bent wheel. So it gave you the list of, list of steps to properly diagnose that, so that's why we have to do that. Okay. Last thing we need to talk about is <clears throat> this 2000 Freightliner has what's called hub piloted wheels. We can easily identify that because it has a washer made to the back side of the lug nut. It's actually a swivel if I had this loose. And the wheel is a tight fit on the inside of this hub assembly that's mounted to the axle. That's what centers this wheel to keep it from moving up and down as it rolls around, in other words, to make it true as it turns. The specification for tightening this wheel is going to be different than what it is for a stud piloted. So we're going to go back to the 92 Freight because it has a stud piloted wheel. So <laughs> stud piloted is easy to identify by it not having any kind of a washer here on the back side. And there's no hub touching the inside of this wheel assembly. What centers this wheel is the back side of this nut has a chamfer. Some people say it's acorn shaped. And the wheel that it's going into has a chamfer on it as well. So as that tightens up, it's like a little wedge on each one of these. And that's what centers the wheel to the hub is through the stud itself, not the hub. That's why it's stud piloted key thing to remember on stud piloted out here on the end that has an R right there on the end of it an R for right-handed thread if you go to the driver's side or the left side of the truck it has a L for left-handed thread so you have to turn out the opposite direction to break it loose or tighten it up on the other side being left-handed thread so always be sure you look at the end of that because somebody could have switched the hubs on there and you'll be snapping off the stud trying to take the wheel off the rear on stud piloted has the R and L depending on which side of the truck they're on as well and that same type of nut as what was on the front the difference here is this nut holds the outside wheel on see how this is square on the end that's actually a inner lug nut to hold the inner wheel on so you have to take these outside nuts here off with an inch and a half to get the outside tire off. Then there's a square drive socket that takes this inner nut or thimble it's called a lot of times because of how it's shaped. That's just kind of a slang term for it, but it has threads on the inside and the outside because there's another stud on the hub that the square drive nut that's holding the inner wheel on. So you got double the lug nuts to take off to get these duals off on a stud piloted setup. Last little important thing. This wheel was installed improperly. A little hard to see on this video with the light, but these holes have to line up on the wheel. This one does not, so there is no way to check the tire pressure on this inside tire. 
this outside wheel was not indexed properly when it was installed so it's not lined up so if this truck came in and I needed to check the inside tire pressure I would have to jack the truck up take this outside wheel re-index it to line the holes up so I could get to the valve stem for the inside tire so always be sure that you line those up when you put them on you might get in a hurry and just put the wheel on and not realize it and it makes you look kind of silly when it comes back in not lined up so that's pretty much the quick steps to tire inspection.